Hello everyone, uh, Paul Riley from IGT, Vice President of Innovation and Lottery Transformation. Today on our whiteboard series, we're gonna talk about blockchain. I'm sure you've heard of blockchain, uh, probably as it relates to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, etc. But uh, we wanted to dive a little bit deeper as it relates to our industry. What is blockchain? What's it all about? How does it work? And uh, probably most importantly, what potential applications exist to leverage blockchain to service our industry? So what and why is it? I think you have to start with the fact that in our digital world today, everything we do is data-based, right? There's financial transactions, business transactions, contracts, all of that is captured and encapsulated with data. And when you have that much data, how do you know for sure that that data is pristine and hasn't been in any way tampered? Blockchain is the underlying technology, platform, technical approach that can ensure that the data that you have has not been tampered with. And so that's the fundamental premise of what blockchain offers uh, to our industry and other industry. Let's take a closer look at how that uh, works. Okay, so first of all, when we talk about data, what is data? It can be numbers, it can be characters, customer records, transactions, alphanumeric, the list goes on and on. But ultimately, in today's digital economy, again, when you resolve data, what's it, what is it really? It's ones and zero, bits and bytes. So all this data, regardless of what type of data you're talking about, resolves itself into numbers and bits and bytes. And then applying blockchain, we can verify that that information has not been tampered with. So let's break down uh, blockchain a little bit. Okay, there's kind of a, a two-step process. And it's pretty straightforward, actually. So first of all, you have all this data, right? Which ultimately resolves itself down to bits and bytes, ones and zeros. First of all, there's a thing called a cryptographic hash function. Now it sounds fancy, but really just think of it as a, an algorithm, a function. You put this data in, and this can be any size data, a little bit of data, to reams and reams of information. When you run it through this cryptographic hash function, it creates what they call a hash. And basically this is a fixed number of characters that is a unique fingerprint to this data. Okay. Uh, without getting too much into all the cryptography and everything else, it basically does this hash. It has a 40 characters. And this is hexadecimal format, which is 0 to 9 and A through F. But basically, you have these 40 characters. As cryptography is evolving and you're getting more and more powerful supercomputers, there might be more uh, characters. But in most cases, 40 is sufficient. This whole process of creating this block and this hash has two unique features. One is unique. When this hash is uh, developed and presented, it's based on this data set. It is absolutely unique to this data set. If I took this data and scrambled it all up, I'd get a different result. If I took all this data and changed one letter, one number, I get a totally different result. Even if I change that one character, it's not gonna be close to this, it's a radically different result. And they have a thing called um, collision. I cannot take two separate data sets that are radically different and somehow get the same result. So it's absolutely 100% unique to this data set. It's also one way. Today, of course, computers are extremely powerful with supercomputers. There's no way I can take this result and basically backwards engineer and try to determine the original data set. So that's what's so interesting about this cryptographic hash function, that when this hash is produced, it's 100% unique to this data set, okay? So that's how we start to create the block of a blockchain. Let's go to the next key step, the chain itself. So I've got my data and I've computed the hash as we just indicated. Of course, that's not the end of the story, right? Data lives, it lives and breathes. So we're gonna have more and more data. So we're gonna have another set of data, right? Now, when we compute this hash, so I've got my first block here, right? I, I just showed on the other page here, I computed this block, the data and the hash that's unique to it. Now I'm going to take and add new data, I'm gonna do a new hash, okay? But when I compute this hash, I'm actually going to include not only the new data here, I'm gonna go up and include the other hash from the prior block. And 
And I'm going to keep that process going. Add data. Add a new hash. And as I do this, boy, that's starting to look a lot like a chain. It's a block chain. And now, based on what I said before, let's assume somebody with either mistake or nefarious intent goes in and modifies the data. They change one little digit here, one little number. What happens? Well, this hash, because they change one, is going to change. This is now different. Because this hash chain, when I hashed up here, I have another little data change here. This one has changed. So you can see the whole chain will cascade down and say, hey, somebody tampered with this data. That's the beauty of it. So as you build this progressive chain of blockchains, everyone is linked together. And everyone, based on the hash, would know immediately if any data has changed within the data set. That's the power of blockchain. It's just sequential uh, hashing of data that builds up over time. And you can see if there's any kind of tampering with that particular data. So I know that data has not been tampered with. You have a master set of data. OK. One other key factor before we get into the applications of a blockchain. There's two major types of blockchain, private and public. Now, what's interesting on blockchains, we've actually been using in the lottery industry, IGT, for many, many years. When you do lottery transactions, we have what we call a master journal file. So every single transaction with all the data associated with that comes into a journal file. And on a regular basis, we take all that data, hash it, add more data, hash it, including the prior hash. And so we, our master journal file is actually a blockchain scenario. What's different, though, is it's private. We do that totally within the confines on behalf of our lottery customers. When you start to hear things like cryptocurrency, these are public blockchains. And you'll frequently hear the term distributed ledger. What's happening in this environment is it's much more of an open uh, blockchain. Any of these entities can update the blockchain. And for example, in cryptocurrency, somebody will add records of financial transactions. All of these nodes will actually compete to figure out that hash. Whichever one competes it, computes it first will say, hey, everybody, I was the first. This is the result. Does everybody agree that's correct? Yes, it is. Then all of these separate entities will update to the new blockchain, and the process repeats over and over. So on a public, there's more of a distributed ledger, more transparency. But the underlying blockchain technology is still the same being used. OK. What are the potential applications for this for our industry? Well, there's a few. First of all, we already talked about transaction processing. It's fantastic for that, right? You have these transactions built up. You can make sure they're never modified. So there's a very strong inherent security, which of course is the fundamental cornerstone of our industries, whether it's lottery or gaming. Inventory control. Uh, one of the more interesting applications uh, that's been out there for blockchain is Walmart worked with IBM in a blockchain solution. And what were they doing? They were actually tracking, I don't know if it was mangoes or avocados, to see where they came from, right when they were picked, to shipped, to delivered. Why? For health concerns. If they ever needed to track where something came from, they could use blockchain and see all those progressive transactions instantly and know that they were 100% verified, nobody had uh, tampered with them. We have plenty of products that have inventory backgrounds. Our whole instant ticket category is based on an inventory product, which goes through many, many phases of being printed. It's being shipped. It's being confirmed. It's being activated, settled. This could be a perfect opportunity to have a blockchain approach, whether private or public, for instant tickets. All of our gaming machines, we need to know their status. What's the status of the software that's in there? Is it certified? So there's a lot of potential applications for inventory control as it applies to our industry. Licensing and contracting, you're also here once in a while about smart contracts. You can leverage blockchain technology to basically set up contracts where if a certain condition is met, a contract will automatically occur. Think of all our licensing for our lottery retailer agents. We have to collect data. Have they been investigated? Uh, do they have the right bonds associated? All of this information can also be set up for smart contracts that, again, you have an absolute clean audit trail through the blockchain that hasn't been tampered with so you know exactly where that data is and where that particular individual stands. Last but not least, digital tickets. 
Historically, we've always had our paper-based tickets, and that is the bearer bond instrument and lottery for a win. Of course, in the interactive space, we have kind of the digital representation. But what about digital tickets that, as I, if I was a player and bought that ticket, maybe I want to transfer to a relative or to a friend or even a portion of that ticket. Again, through the blockchain, we could set up a repository for digital tickets and control the ledger and the record of how that ticket has been handled, who it's been transferred to, if it's been broken apart, in an undeniable, verifiable record that a blockchain could support. So we're looking at this technology. We've been using it for many years to support our existing transaction set. But as you've seen with the hype and the IT industries and cryptocurrency, many, many other industries are looking at blockchain to see how they can apply it to their business processes for its inherent capabilities, just as we look to do that for our lottery industry and even gaming industry. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out. It's paul.riley at igt.com. And look forward to another one of our whiteboard sessions soon. Thank you.